Melanie Janine Brown was born in Hare Hills, Leeds on May 29, 1975 and grew up in Burley area of the city, the daughter of Andrea Lee Dixon and Martin Brown. Her father is from the Caribbean island nation of St. Kitts and Nevis, while her mother is English. Mel B studied performing arts at Intake High School in Leeds before entering the entertainment industry. For a time, she worked as a dancer in the holiday resort Blackpool, Lancashire. After seeing an advertisement for an audition in a newspaper, Mel started her music career in a band known as Touch. The group left the original management team and eventually teamed up with music manager Simon Fuller. In 1994, Mel, along with Mel C., Jerry Hollywell, and Victoria Beckham, responded to an advertisement in the Stage magazine. It was around 400 women who answered the advertisement. <laughs> and they attended auditions at Dance Works Studios in Mayfair, London. So then, Hollywell Chisla. Beckham and Brown were originally chosen as the members of the group and then formed with Emma Button. However, the group felt insecure about the lack of a contract and were frustrated by the direction in which Hart management was going and broke with them. Now, in 1995, they toured record labels in London and Los Angeles and finally signed to deal with Virgin Records. Their debut album, Spice, was a huge worldwide success, as we all know, and peaked at number one in more than 17 countries across the world and so on and so on and forth with that. You already know the rest, let's move on. While being young, we all date around and had fun. And in Mel's case, she even dated a woman for about five years. She said she was deeply in love with her, but then she started looking for the one, a husband. However, luck hasn't been that good. Now, from 1996 to 1997, Mel dated Icelandic businessman for Janir Thorgerson. Then in March, while on tour, she began a relationship with Dutch dancer Jimmy Goser, and they became engaged on May 13, 1998. And Mel became pregnant the following month in June, and they wed on September 1998. But later, Mel filed for divorce, and at the end, she ended up paying him $2.5 million dollars and thankfully got custody of their daughter, Phoenix. But it doesn't end there. Jamie was so devastated and upset that he started threatening Mel and then attacking her sister, Danielle, because he couldn't get close to Mel. He was later found guilty and then later cleared. Now, you haven't figured it out something in Mel? I mean, she seemed to be attracting the same kind of men. Okay, I'm sure you all heard about the affair Mel B had with Eddie Murphy. Well, it seems that the two were dating exclusively and she thought that he really cared about her. But as she stated upon her telling him that she was pregnant, he became distant and didn't want anything to do with her anymore. Every woman he had since his divorce from his first wife, Nicole, was always temporary. Mel B, however, wanted so bad for him to be at least part of their child's life. She went far as to speak with Nicole even after a DNA test. But that was a waste because Eddie Murphy was not ready to settle down again. Heck, he even tried marrying again, but that was over before the ink dried. But I heard he married again since then, so I guess we'll see how long this will last. Anyway, so Mel was left pregnant, alone, and while vulnerable, she fell for the next loser that came along, Stephen Belafonte, who claimed to be related to Harry Belafonte which he is not. It was even told that she tried to set up another meeting with Eddie Murphy so that he could see his daughter, Angel. However, she alleges Stephen sabotaged the plans by an example of identity theft. This is what she said. She said that Stephen became aware of the meeting and in an effort derailed the meet. He took her phone without her knowledge or consent and text Eddie Murphy, Angel's father, assistant, at around 4.30 a.m. impersonating and claiming to be her. She also said that she didn't even know the content of the text, of course, but do know that Eddie Murphy canceled the meeting. Oh, I'm not done yet. It seems that Steven is a very violent man. His brother Jeremiah Stansbury even tried to warn Mel off Steven by saying, 
I have watched his temper fume and fume. He seems to love violence. Now this is his brother saying this. It also seemed that Mel lied about the true nature of their relationship like most women do. And we all know a lot of Hollywood couples are probably going through the same thing, but they will remain to deny it and be hypocrites on television. And you all know who I'm talking about, but you already know the video. Let's move on. You see, Steven was arrested before he, he went to jail in 2001 for burglary. Then he went to jail again two years later for battery after attacking his partner at the time named Nicole Contreras, who later had to go to a domestic violence program. Here are the dates of the abuse. Well, when Mel came runner-up on Dancing with the Stars in 2007, after the singer performed at the closing ceremony for the London Olympics in 2012, and when Stephen thought she was flirting with Usher on Australia's version of the X Factor the same year, it was also alleged that Stephen owned a gun, despite being prohibited from carrying firearms as part of a previous domestic violence conviction with another woman, and tried to stop Mel from going to see her dying father. Allegations of domestic abuse had previously surfaced in 2004 after Mel appeared on X Factor with what appeared to be bruises and, of course, accusations followed. He was then forced to deny it because of risk of her losing her job at the X Factor. It also seems that the two, well, Stephen mainly, is a sex addict and they were known to have sex like five times a day and often watch porn. It was also told that Stephen was the reason why Mel split with the Spice Girls in the first place because they didn't like him, as we all probably heard on um, TV. And because they just didn't trust well, he didn't trust her alone on the road. He just felt that she was probably going to see some other guy. He was just a very insecure, violent, and troubled man. Um, we broke a very big story on the website this morning, and we really want to kind of break this down for you because this doesn't just apply to a celebrity, but there is a bigger issue that affects a lot of people that we want to talk about. Issues. Absolutely. So Mel B has won a restraining order against her estranged husband, Stephen Belafonte. And uh, under that order, he not only has to stay clear of her and their, their kids, but also he has been ordered to move out of the family home. She has filed a 20-page declaration <clears throat> where she just lays out what she calls years and years of unspeakably horrible physical abuse. And she has specific examples that she remembers from as far back uh, it's 2007, and you're going to notice a pattern here in a lot of these things. Uh, it has a lot to do with good things happening in Mel B's life, and then she says, uh, Belafonte, then uh, attacking her. The first one she remembers that she notes uh, in, the, in the documents is November 2007. Uh, it was the Dancing with the Stars finale, which she was on, uh, and she says they were getting ready to go to the studio when he choked her, uh, slammed her on the floor as she was getting ready. Uh, and says that he, uh, he beat me down to let me know he was in charge. And she says this is the pattern in their lives where she would achieve some level of success and that would trigger a beating where he would say, I'm in control. He would hum humiliate her and say, look, you're stupid. You are an idiot. Nobody respects you. I'm the only reason you're achieving this. And as she achieved, her self-esteem actually went lower. Uh, another incident was more about jealousy, uh, where she was going into tape uh, The X Factor in UK, and uh, she was going to be doing a segment with Usher, and he again, uh, Belafonte attacked her, she says, flew into a jealous rage, punched her in the face, split her lip, uh, and when she asked, how am I supposed to go do the show uh, with this injury, he said, you should have thought of that before deciding to flirt and blank Usher. And so uh, we want to mention one more, but before we do, um, take a look at these pictures because these are pictures that she ended up posting where she was making all sorts of excuses on why she got bruises. And as you look at these pictures and you're going to see bruises, she told another story about the closing ceremony of the London Olympics. Uh, in fact, that bruise, uh, she, she says, uh, happened around that time. Uh, before the London Olympics, uh, the closing ceremony where she uh, performed, uh, she, he said that he grabbed her, threw her down on the ground, and rubbed her face 
uh, that she had rug burns so uh, that, that so bad that it scabbed over. And 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 one of the things she said was when when stuff like this happened, she said, "I was wearing Louis Vuitton shoes and I tripped." So she was giving all these excuses to people, but it got so bad that in 2014 she tried killing herself. Yes, I said that she locked herself in a room and took an entire bottle of aspirin. Uh, she just wanted to die, and then she reconsidered and realized she needed to get help, and she went to dial, she was, they were in the UK at the time, she dialed 999, uh, and uh, he blocked her from doing that, threw her in the bedroom, locked the door, and said, uh, die, bitch. And, and so um, she ended up going to the hospital. But here's the interesting thing about this. For years and years, people who worked with her, people who were on the sets of X Factor, on, you know, on all of all the, the shows, shows she did, done, right. they saw these injuries. And they also saw Stephen Belafonte on the set. And a lot of the people are saying that he was crazy, he was threatening, he was abusive. And, yeah, and, and she so clearly, they observe those things that they, they feel that way about. And him. she lied yes. about the injuries to most people, but they never, as far as we could see, nobody on any of these sets ever called the police. And Harvey, you know, I mean, we have to assume these facts are, you know, true for the sake of just the pleading here. There's been no proof yet. But one of the things that really struck me is the relationship with the nanny. So he hires a nanny to come and help take care of their kids. He ends up having an affair with the nanny, which is something we've seen in other celebrity couples in the past. But he ends up impregnating the nanny, puts pressure on, his, on Mel B to maintain her as the nanny, notwithstanding the fact that she's now pregnant, wants to include the nanny and the new child in the relationship, in the home. Mel B objects, so he, he's accused of having a sort of cause the nanny to then have an abortion, but then insists that Mel B continue to have the nanny as their employee for the kids that, that the three kids her. they do have. How much was it? $300,000 $300, over and, three years. And all the while, every time he wanted her to do something or not do something, including having three ways with other women, uh, and this is, again, according to her allegations, he would say, I have sex tapes on you that I recorded of us. I will release these sex tapes. I will ruin your career, and I'll call children's services on you and have your kids taken away. So this is a complete control situation if you believe her. Now, on the ATF, on Friday night, yes, the ATF showing up uh, at the home. We showed you the video. We broke this where they showed up at the home uh, and looking for broke a gun. in looking for a gun. Uh, in the documents, she says he does have a gun at home. She believes it is a 38 or a, or a 357. She, he's not allowed to have a gun because of a domestic violence conviction. So the ATF went in the house. Um, we were at the house yesterday when he moved out, and we asked Stephen Belafonte, about some of the allegations, his answers are interesting. He says uh, the dance with the stars finale uh -huh. years ago, he threw her to the ground on the hardwood floor and choked her. Um, what's your response to that? Keep going. I, I haven't heard okay. the allegations. And also, she said on X Factor, when she was on X Factor, you accused her of having sex with Usher. I'm sure all on X, X Factor, so how's that possible? I don't know. You know what my comment to this is, actually, you know what, because that is the mother of my children. I really, 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 am really distraught in my brain that this, how this is going to affect our children and the depths that she's gone to. That's, that's it. That's it. I mean, I really, I'm, I'm shocked at those allegations, and that's what it is. Anyway, thank you so much. So he doesn't say untrue. He never, he never flatly denies the allegations, as we, as we laid out almost all of them from the documents, and he never says that's not true. It's sort of dancing around it. Uh, and he, he did go on to uh, say that he thinks that there are people on her team who are making her say these things. Um, I, I, that's that seems. I mean, that seems like, like a rational. Thing. You should know that she kept going back and forth. She would try to leave him, and she wouldn't. She would leave him, and then she'd go back. And what really pushed her over the edge was her dad's death last month. And apparently, Stephen Belafonte did not like her dad. And her dad was essentially saying, if you do anything in your life, do this when I die. And, and she did. Uh, and she was distraught about that. And according to her, the comments he made when she was so distraught were, you know, if he dies, he dies. Completely unsympathetic to her plight. Hi, this is uh, Rebecca Bradley from Detroit. Basically, I just want to say, like, I think she was probably, she could have been living that battered wife syndrome.
syndrome where they're scared to tell or she was scared he had dirt on her. But at the end of the day, it's all going to come out. I'm glad that she is overcoming this because, you know, she could end up dead and that you can't come back to life once you die. So, yeah. Boy, that is uh, well said. Yeah. That, that is well said. And, and again, you know, this is so interesting that you have a situation where this woman is so on the surface successful and beautiful and you think confident right. and, you never... and you just never know. <laughs>